So this is another one of those things that it's easiest to show you, maybe, than to try to describe it. But we talked about how wind is basically air relocating from a high to a low pressure, and it seems like it should go in a straight line, right? But there are two forces that we're going to talk about that actually change the direction that the air is moving. And this first force I'm going to show you actually is more of an apparent deflection than a real deflection. And you, I think uh, I mentioned earlier, so I'll kind of underline the word apparent, I think I mentioned earlier that it has to do with the Coriolis force that I'm going to describe has to do with the fact that the Earth is rotating or spinning on its axis. Um, so basically, in order for this sort of spin to be applied or this sort of um, redirection to be applied to uh, air that's moving, that air needs to be free moving. Um, that air needs to be not associated with the atmosphere. Well, I guess air isn't associated with the atmosphere because in, it's in the, sorry, that, earth, that air cannot be on the ground, okay, stuck to the ground. It's free moving. That's what I'm trying to say here. Um, so this apparent deflection has a direction. In the northern hemisphere, it's to the right. That's why I keep going like this. It's to the right. So if, if it was going this way, if the air was going this way, it's like this, to the right. In the southern hemisphere, the deflection, the apparent deflection, because the Coriolis force is to the left. So I said it's kind of easier to show you. I hope you agree with me. So what we're going to do is consider an airplane, or a jet, I guess it's got to be a jet, that basically is lifting off of the ground at the North Pole, and it's going to go towards the equator. And first I want, let's consider if um, the Earth is not spinning. Okay, if the Earth is not spinning, I know that's kind of a strange, scary thought, but basically that plane would lift off, and let's just say he's riding the longitude, 90 degrees longitude, he would lift off, okay, and since the Earth wasn't spinning, he would end up staying along that line of longitude, 90 degrees longitude, okay, so he would hit his target just like that. Well, the Earth is rotating, so as that plane lifts off, or jet lifts off, from the North Pole, and it is flying straight, what's happening is the Earth is spinning underneath it, or rotating underneath it. So if you were to kind of look at a bird's eye view of where the plane can land flying straight, it ends up landing um, over here, even though it's flying straight. So the line of longitude would basically kind of shift, and instead of hitting 90 degrees longitude, he ends up at 105 degrees longitude. Okay, and if you kind of stand on top of the North Pole, can you kind of see where that is a, de um, a deflection to the right in the Northern Hemisphere? That's the Coriolis force, that's because the Earth is spinning on its axis. Well, let's kind of look at it a little bit different. Instead of going from north, the North Pole to the equator, Let's say that this jet is leaving our surface, getting into the air, and it's trying to stay along the same line of latitude. So let's take a look at that. So here we see the plane lifting off, and it's, it's going straight, going straight, trying to stay on the same latitude. And can you see where, uh, by, the, by the way, the, the line of latitude in this particular case was 60 degrees latitude. And can you see where, um, if we call this position A, this position B, and this position C, by position C, we have quite a deflection. And again, it's to the right in the northern hemisphere. Well, let's say he's not at 60 degrees latitude, but he's going to drive a fly straight, lift off and fly straight, 40 degrees latitude. Again, the Earth is spinning, and so from position A to, to position C, this is the deflection of the plane. And notice, actually, it's less of a deflection. Going closer to the equator line of latitude, 20 degrees north latitude, notice that by C, location C, there's just a small deflection. And honestly, and this is characteristic of this particular deflection, apparent deflection, near the equator, there is no deflection. Okay? So you see here, um, you know, it lifts off, drives a straight, or flies in a straight line, and the Earth is rotating, but there's no deflection. Um, so, 
uh, deflection is to the right in the northern hemisphere, it's to the south in the southern hemisphere. So some basic rules of the Coriolis force that's caused by the Earth rotating on its axis. Um, and we'll kind of see this when we start looking at um, this force applied to the pressure gradient force, but it is at a right angle relative to the motion. The motion is in the direction of the pressure gradient force. Wait, no, not necessarily. Um, I mentioned, and you saw a minute ago, that it is strongest near the poles and near the equator. The Coriolis force basically peters out. Uh, what are some other rules? Deflection is to the right in the northern hemisphere, to the south, in the, excuse me, to the left in the southern hemisphere. Um, the Coriolis force will increase with increasing speed and increasing distance. The Coriolis force, there's kind of a white, an old wives' tale out there that if you are, um, if somebody kidnaps you and they take you, that you don't know what hemisphere you're in, the northern hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, there's an old wives' tale out there that you can look at how the water spins down your toilet bowl to know um, whether you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. Because honestly, this Coriolis force does end up kind of spinning things differently. But here's the problem with that wives' tale. The water going down your toilet bowl, it doesn't go very far down your toilet bowl, and it's not going very fast. So the Coriolis force really doesn't govern that sort of movement. Um, more I've read that it's like the, um, the how your porcelain bowl is set up, <laughs> not to get too personal. Um, so keep in mind that Coriolis force and the, um, the Coriolis force does not change the speed of an object. It just simply um, in the northern hemisphere will um, deflect it to the right. I'm going to go ahead and tack on frictional force, too. I debated, but there's only one slide. So or that's the way I have it anyway. Frictional force is something that's kind of uh, we all know a little bit about. And basically, it moves in a direction opposite the direction of motion. Um, and so honestly, you can we can kind of think of horizontal wind as sometimes going in layers. Uh, this is kind of what this figure is showing you. Like, for instance, we have this track of, of wind going from high to low pressure that's closest to the Earth's surface. Okay, So closest to the Earth's surface, that's going to be the most friction. So we'll call that layer of air, or let's, I guess I should say layer of wind A. And then we can think of a layer of wind B up there that what is it rubbing up against? Well, it's rubbing up against the layer of wind A. Okay, so A will make a little bit of drag on B, and C, well, it's dragging a little bit against, against B, and D is dragging a little bit against C. One of the things that we do see um, to a large extent as you go up in elevation, we have increasing wind speed, and I think it's on the slide, increasing wind speed. And this last, uh, or this figure over here is kind of neat, it's showing you kind of the the tilted nature of a of a snowdrift. So, so wind speeds generally increase with increasing elevation. There's less frictional force. Frictional force basically slows down wind. 